Hi guys, today I am here live to give you or to talk to you about the one thing that has made the biggest impact in my students in our online academy. And it's not the thing I would have thought is making the biggest impact. So that's what we're talking about today. So the thing about being a dog trainer is that I have spent most of my life wondering why I don't struggle with a lot of things my students struggle with. And it's not because I'm talented or because even necessarily um, because I have, I'm a professional dog trainer, it's because I do specific things when I raise a puppy. And if I do specific things that help me avoid certain struggles and get through certain challenges, then those are things you can do too. And one of my favorite things about learning from multiple dog trainers isn't to see what they do differently, it's to see what they do the same. So a lot of us go to different seminars, we read different books, we learn from different trainers to see what it is each trainer does differently that we can then take into inc incorporate in our own training. I actually really enjoy seeing what trainers do that is the same because the similarities between all the really good trainers tend to be the most important thing. And this is one of those things. So what we're talking about today is something my students have named Freedom Walks. Now, when I first started teaching on this topic, I didn't have a name for this and my students kind of gave it that name, so we're going to go with it. But today we're talking about Freedom Walks. Now, what these are is either off-leash, if you have a dog safe place to take your dog off-leash, or um, on a harness and a long line, so like a 15 foot long line. And the purpose of these walks is to give your dog some freedom, to allow him to choose where to go, to allow him to smell and sniff and move however he wants. It's about giving him time to decompress and to be a dog. And my personal dogs get a lot of off leash time and a lot of walks on a long line. They get a lot of freedom. And the reason that I think this helps my puppies um, avoid some of the pitfalls that we tend to struggle with during adolescence is because as our puppies get older, just like human children, they start to really um, crave some freedom. They crave that independence and that being able to go do things and try things, right? So freedom walks are a way to provide that freedom so that they we're fulfilling that need for them. So that's what we're talking about today is these freedom walks. Now. Freedom walks are something that I have noticed a lot of dog trainers do and a lot of dog trainers talk about. And it was when I heard Sarah Stremming talk about decompression walks that I realized that this was one of the reasons that my adolescent dogs don't tend to struggle quite as much as a lot of my students' adolescent dogs. Again, it's not because I'm lucky or just talented or whatever. It's because my adolescent dogs get a lot of freedom, which is something that they really, really need. So Sarah Strumming has an excellent podcast on decompression walks, and I will link to it when I'm done here um, so that you guys can listen to that as well. So these walks are important because our dogs need that freedom. Our dogs need time to be a dog, especially when it comes to our service dogs and training. We get so caught up in making sure they're not developing bad habits and teaching them to heal on a leash and doing all their training, which is good and important, and we want to do all those things. But I think that us humans can get a little caught up in that and forget to just let them kind of be a dog and explore and decompress. And so what these freedom walks allow us to do is that, first of all, it allows for freedom. They get to sniff things. They get to explore. And it also protects your healing. So I started using freedom walks for my students out of a need to protect their healing. Because as most of you probably already know, healing is one of the most challenging things you're going to teach your dogs, right? It's something a lot of us struggle with. It's a complicated behavior. It takes a while. And the thing about teaching your dog to heal is that every moment he's on a leash, he's learning whether or not he gets to pull or if he should walk in heel position. And this is something that Hannah Brannigan has talked about as well. And so here again, this is where I'm saying I like to see what all these good trainers do that's the same. And I can name four or five trainers off the, really, really good trainers off the top of my head that really utilize a lot of these freedom, this freedom walk idea. So one of the things it does is it protects your healing. Because if my dog is on a collar and a short leash, that's one set of cues that tells him I want him to walk nicely. 
Whereas if my dog is on a harness and a long line, that's a separate set of cues that tells my dog, now it's okay for you to be out ahead of me. It's okay for you to sniff the ground. It's okay for you to do all of these things. Now, a lot of owner trainers and service dog trainers use the vest to communicate when the dog needs to heal and when the dog can have free time. And there's nothing wrong with that, except that every time your dog pulls into his collar, he's learning whether or not he can, how he should walk on a leash. So he's, every time he pulls into his collar, he's learning whether or not he needs to heal. Every time he pulls into his collar and moves forward, he is being reinforced for pulling, right? So what this means is that if you have to walk your dog for exercise or have to walk your dog for potty breaks, putting your dog on a harness and a long line for those moments can really help to protect your training. So what I want to do is show you a video of me doing a freedom walk with Leo on a long line, and we'll keep talking about this a little bit. Now, in a perfect world, we I would love to see these freedom walks done off-leash, but that requires a lot of things to be in place. Your dog has to have a good recall. You have to have a place that's safe and legal for you to have your dogs off-leash. So this is Leo and I in a campground where he can't be off-leash. It's neither legal nor safe for him to be off-leash in this area. So he's on a harness and a 15 foot long line. So I'm gonna play this video for you and turn the volume down because you don't really need that. So this is a him walking on a, a normal Y harness with a clip in the back so that he has full range of motion in his shoulders. And I have a 15 foot long line. Now what this allows me to do is as he moves out ahead of me, I let my long line out, I let the, le the leash lengthen and he can move away from me. As he moves closer to me, I reel my long line back in. So you can see here that this gives him a lot more freedom than walking on a six foot leash and a collar would give him. Because now he actually has some, some choices. He can decide where to walk, what to sniff, all of that kind of stuff. Now a lot of times with when I'm doing these freedom walks, I will stop. So here, for example, I stopped because he wanted to stop. He wanted to stop and sniff, so I stopped with him. This is not us out for a training homework. This is not us out trying to um, you know, heal a certain number of steps or get to a particular place. This is not even about him getting physical exercise where we both need to keep moving, moving, moving. This is about him having a mental break to decompress, to smell things, to explore, and to have some free time. And if you live in an apartment or you live in a, in a house that doesn't have a fenced in yard, your dog especially needs this time because they really need some time where they get to go explore. And you can see here, like Leo is chewing at his leash and I'm really not that worried about it because in his harness and long line, that's a cue structure that tells him he can be more informal. He can go out ahead of me. He can carry his leash. He can stop and sniff wherever he wants. Now, in order to do this on a long line safely, there are mechanics that you need to, you need to practice ahead of time without your dog. So right now, for example, Leo is tangled in the long line and that's really unsafe. What we want is for me as the handler to always keep the line in my hands so that it's never dragging on the ground and it's never getting tangled in the, it, the dogs are never getting tangled in it. So here you can see I reeled up my leash and he only has a very small section because we're walking right next to a road and I really want him to be safe. So he only has about five feet worth of rope, worth of leash to continue walking in here. But again, because he's on the harness, it's a cue structure that helps protect my training. It helps make sure that he's not learning any bad habits during this time. And then as we round this corner and it's okay for him to move out again, you can see how I let the leash go out when he moves away from me and I reel the leash in when he comes back. I always have the extra slack reeled up in my right hand there. If you're going to do a freedom walk on a long line, it's really important that you learn these mechanics so that you and your dog can stay safe. Because if you and or your dog get tangled in a long line, a lot of injuries can happen. So you really have to, you have to get comfortable using a long line in this way. But, this of using a long line is a way to provide your dog with a lot of freedom and an ability to sniff and um, explore and do all of those things in a safe way. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this just a little bit more. And if you guys have any questions, if anybody watching live has any questions about um, freedom walks, go ahead and throw them in. And I'm going to talk about this for just another minute. And that'll be it for today. Today was nice, short, and sweet. But for real... <laughs> 
I was not expecting this to make as big of an impact in my students' training as it did. Um, I thought that this would be helpful, it would um, help the dogs decom decompress, it would help them be happier, it would help with socialization. Because you can see in this video, you know, Leo is being exposed to a lot of new things, a lot of new sights and sounds and smells um, in a very stress-free way. He can explore where he wants to go, he can move where he wants to go, he can sniff what he wants to sniff. So I thought that this would be a good way to help protect my students' training, healing training. It would be a good way for them to socialize their puppies, and it would be um, a good way for them to get the puppies out on potty breaks. What I didn't realize was the impact that this would have in their training itself. So a lot of people found that once their dogs were given these freedom walks, things like focus improved, things like motivation improved, things like engagement improved. Because now that their dog was actually getting the free time that they needed, they were more interested in training with their, with their handlers. So, oops, there we go. So freedom walks don't necessarily seem like something that would impact your training. But the thing about training is that if you don't, if you aren't meeting all of your dog's needs, you're going to struggle with training. And your dog's needs go beyond shelter, air, food, and water. Okay, your dog also needs exercise. He also needs training. He also needs mental stimulation, and he also needs freedom. And he needs time to be a dog. And without that, you're going to struggle in your training. And one of the things I see students struggle, I think, comes back to bite students very, very often, is this idea that we need to take our dogs for weekly, nightly walks. Every night, we need to go walk around the neighborhood, right? And that... My dog has to go for a walk. He needs exercise. He needs time to be a dog. And your dog does need exercise, and he does need time to be a dog. But if your dog is pulling on his leash for your whole walk, you are never going to teach him to heal. It doesn't matter what training protocol you're using to teach your dog to heal. If he's pulling into his leash more often than he's walking nicely, you're never going to get that behavior down. Never. So what your dog needs is physical exercise. But if your dog is... Um, a higher energy dog or a larger dog or uh, like an adolescent dog, a leash walk is hardly going to count as physical exercise. He needs to learn to walk on a leash, and that's a training session. So you might go for a walk around the block as a training session where you keep your dog in heel position. Or you can take your dog out for these freedom walks where he can move around a little more freely and he can explore and he can decompress. Now, during these freedom walks, one thing that I forgot to mention it's really important is that I like to reinforce my dogs for checking in during these walks. So in the video you saw, I did not have treats, or I had treats on me, but I didn't use them. Um, and that's because Leo and I are working on something special. But <laughs> with most dogs, when we're out for a freedom walk, if they look up at me, I'm going to go, oh, good puppy, good dog. And I'm going to give them three or four treats and make a really big deal about it. And then I'm going to say, okay, let's go. And we'll start to walk again. And then we don't have any more treats until the next time they check in with me. And what that does is it works on that focus and it works on that interest in hanging out with you and that interest in paying attention in a very low stress way. Because I'm not nagging my dog, begging for his attention, just reinforcing him whenever it happens. And so that can really help you get the freedom component in there so that your dog is free to do what he wants, but when he looks back up at you, something really great will happen. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with freedom walks is that... Um, your dog really needs to either be walking, in which case you're keeping the line loose, or you're stopping your dog. So I'm going to play this video again, and I want you to watch for is when Leo starts to go too close to the campers, and I, I don't want him to go that direction, I just stop him. I don't drag him, I don't call him away, I don't force him to do anything, because this is his free time. But what I do is I just stop, wait for him to choose a different direction, and then we go that direction. I'm hoping he's going to do it here any second since we're talking about it, but I don't have this video like totally memorized. Um, so here, for example, oh, maybe not. Now he had to pee. Okay, so what that means during our freedom walks is we're either moving or we're standing still, but when we're moving, the line has to be loose. I don't want my dog dragging me around even during these walks. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write up a blog post to go with this um, live because as of course I'm teaching I'm like oh you guys really need like a checklist so I'm gonna 
I'm going to create um, a quick blog post and checklist to go along with this live. And in a, later today, I'll post it in the comments of this video so that you guys can get your hands on it. Um, to kind of give you the checklist of things that you need and things, things you need when you go on a freedom walk and what you should be doing during your freedom walk. So I'll create a little checklist for you guys because I think that that would be really helpful. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer these questions that you guys have here. Um, and then if you have any other questions, you can throw them in. So Heidi has asked, um, I have trouble with my service dog and training and focus. So focus is, of course, a huge topic, and it's not directly the topic of this live. Um, but I will drop a little hint. We are going to be talking about focus and engagement coming up here in October. So um, stay tuned because we're going to have a whole bunch of um, engagement and we're going to do an engagement and focus exciting stuff is coming, so pay attention. So we'll be doing a lot of stuff about this here in October. But um, one of the things about Freedom Walks is that they can really help focus for two reasons. First, because you're, you're giving your dog what he needs. It's really hard for your dogs to focus on you when everything in the environment is super novel and super exciting and that need for freedom isn't being fulfilled. So one of the things that I found with our students is that as soon as they start incorporating these freedom walks into their like weekly routine, their dogs start to focus better because they're finally getting the things that they need. Now, secondly, this helps with focus because if you are out doing, if you're following all the instructions for a freedom walk and you're out doing your freedom walk, whenever your dog looks at you, that's when you're going to tell him how great he is, give him a bunch of treats, and then go back to your freedom walk. So you're going to be reinforcing your dog for voluntarily engaging with you and looking at you and checking in during these freedom walks. And that can really help with focus all on its own. Um, then we have a question. The only harness I have is her vest. Should I use a different harness and a long lead? Yes, I would not use your service dog's vest for this. So one of the reasons, there are a couple of reasons that I use a harness. A typical Y harness with a clip on the back. One is for safety. Um, so three reasons. One is for safety because I don't want my dog getting tangled. Second is for freedom of movement. I don't want the harness that goes across their, their chest this way because I want his shoulders to be able to move freely. This is about free time, right? And third, I use a harness with a clip on the back because it doesn't feel or look like our service dog vest. And by putting my dog on a harness in a long line, I'm hoping to set up a different cue structure so that when my dog is wearing the harness and I'm carrying the long line, he knows that that is the cue that tells him now you can move out ahead of me, you can sniff whatever you want, etc., etc., right? Whereas when you're on a normal collar and I'm carrying a short leash, that's when you should be in service dog mode. You should heal nicely, you should do all the things. So I would choose a different harness. Um, okay, I use a flexi leash. Is this the same concept as a long line for a freedom walk? Okay, so here's the thing about flexi leashes. This is a really good question. Um, yes, it can kind of give them that same sense of freedom, right? Because the, the flexi leash gets longer and it allows them to move out and, and move around. Um, I still don't recommend them, partly because I see a lot of injuries on, long, on um, flexi leashes. I see a lot more injuries on flexi leashes than I do on long lines. And secondly, um, because... In order to get more leash, on a flexi leash, your dog has to pull. And when he pulls, he will get more leash. And even though we're talking about using a harness and we're trying to set up a different cue structure, I don't like that contingency. I don't like my dog learning when you pull, more leash will appear, right? Um, so on a long line, I have more control and my dog is either stopped or the leash is, is still pretty loose. Um, and I can't do that same thing with a flexi leash. So I'm not going to say it's wrong, but I am going to say I don't personally like it, um, but that doesn't necessarily make it, make it um, wrong for you in your situation. But do be very careful with flexi leashes. Well, be very careful with a long line as well. You guys always need to be careful with these things. Um, so Sherry wants to know, do you take treats? So... I did talk about this. I think you asked the question like right before I was talking about it. Um, I carry treats on my freedom walks 
for a couple of reasons. First, I want to be able to reinforce my dog when he does good things. So when he looks up at me, I want to be able to reinforce him for that. Because even though we're on a freedom walk and I want my dog to explore the environment and I want him to have freedom and I want him to smell things, I also want him to like acknowledge that I'm still there, right? I want him to learn that I'm still fun. So being able to reinforce voluntary check-ins can really help that. I also carry treats because you just never know what's going to happen. Um, if I do need to recall my dog for some reason or tell him leave it or give any kind of cue, I want to be able to reinforce him for that. So when we're out on a freedom walk, I'm trying to limit the amount of cues I get. I'm trying not to call my dog too often. I'm trying not to use too many leave it's. Now, if I need to, I will, um, especially if there's a safety consideration, right? Uh, but I'm trying mostly to let my dog just have some time without me telling him what to do. But I do like to have treats so that if, if my dog does voluntarily check in with me or I do need to give a cue, I still can. Um, okay, so then again, we sort of mentioned this a couple of times. Alex was asking, what if the dog pulls on the freedom walk? That is where I'm going to step. I'm going to stop moving. Um, I don't have a very good video of this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop moving, walk towards my dog as I reel up the line. So that when I get to the end, I'm standing right next to my dog and I have all 15 feet in my hand. And then we'll start to walk again. And so then my dog can, you know, I'll slowly let the line out. And if he pulls, I'll reel myself back up. So we're either stopping, you know, we're either, we've either come to a stop or we're moving on a loose leash. I still don't want your dogs learning to drag you around, even if they're on the harness. Because while it's still, I think that's where we get into a gray area. And I don't really like gray areas. So I would personally stop moving, reel the line in, and then you can start to move again. Um, okay. Okay, and then here's a question. Um, where do you get your long line? The only ones I've seen that are genuinely long are too big for a puppy, so it adds a fair amount of weight. I really, um, I order my long lines on Amazon, and let me just, I'm going to make myself a note, and I will also post you guys the link to the, to the one I use, and it's, you know, you don't have to use the one I use, but it's the one I like. Um, I like 15 feet because I think that that's a good length. Um, 20 feet starts to feel like a lot of leash in your hand and anything less than 15 feet and you start to inhibit the whole idea of freedom, right? Because then your dog only has so many feet to move in. Um, depending on your situation, sometimes a 10 foot leash can still work out really well, especially if you have a small dog or you live in a neighborhood or something. Um, so 10 feet can work really well, but I generally start at a 15 foot line and I order them on Amazon. And I think they're called, like, the name of the company is, like, Clicks, C-L-I-X, or something like that. But I will post the long line I personally use, um, and I just order it on Amazon. Um, okay, any other questions about Freedom Walks? Because this really, you know, like I kind of said before, our dogs don't just need food and water and shelter from us. They need exercise and they need mental stimulation, and they need a good relationship with you, and they need freedom. They need to have time to just be a dog. And I think that we, what happens with us owner trainers, with us, well, dog trainers and owner trainers, is that we get into this, um, I need to just let my dog be a dog, and then we let bad habits develop. Because we want to let them be a dog and give them free time, but we don't really know what that means, right? And this is one way that we can give free time and we can give dog time without letting it be a free-for-all or without accidentally letting our dogs learn a whole bunch of bad habits because we were trying to give them freedom. Um, cool. Okay, so that is all for today. Um, if you guys have questions on Freedom Walks, you can always ask that. Inside the group is the best place to do that. Train your service dog with confidence. Um, and if you have tried Freedom Walks or when you do try a Freedom Walk with your dog, I'd love to see a picture or a video um, inside our Facebook group, Train Your Service Dog with Confidence. So when you go out and try this with your own dog, let us know how it goes. Let us know what questions you have and, um, and post us a video or a picture. Okay, and then I'll ask this, and she has one last question. So Heidi asked, how long should I do Freedom Walks and can't, oh, we've got a couple more questions. Excellent. We'll do these quick. Um, okay. How long should I do a freedom walk and can I use a six foot leash? 
You can use a six foot leash. I don't recommend it though, because what I really want is that very clear difference for your dog, where you're either on a short leash or you're on a long leash. So I think personally six feet is too short, but it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, and then l length of time wise, I think the longer the better. So Sarah Strumming recommends decompression walks need to be twice as long as it takes your dog to calm down. So if you go out for a walk and your dog gets really, really excited and he's like super excited, you have to wait for him to calm down and then continue to go. So if Leo and I go for a freedom walk and it, for the first 10 minutes he's like bouncing around and he's super excited and he can't believe we're outside, then I need to walk for 20 minutes because I needed the 10 minutes to let him calm down and then I needed to go 10 minutes after that. But the freedom walks, I mean, it's really up to you. If you have five minutes, go for five minutes. If you've got an hour, go for an hour. I don't think that there's a specific period, length of time that freedom walks need to be. And then Kayla asks, should you ever switch between freedom walk and training in a single session? Gear change and all or no? I do. So it depends on, well, I'm going to say it depends on the, the amount of time you have, where you're going, that kind of stuff. I don't think there's any reason you should not change gear and go into a training session. As long as your dog still has, um, the, both of you still have the physical and the mental capacity to do a training session. So when Leo was only like eight weeks old, you know, a 20 minute freedom walk was it. He was gonna be, he was gonna be asleep for three hours if we did a 20 minute freedom walk, right? Now as a five month old, almost adolescent, we can go for a 20 minute freedom walk and then I can take his harness off and clip a six foot leash to his collar and then we can do a training session. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. I think you can definitely do your freedom walk and then do a training session as long as you're being careful to switch gear. And um, when the har the important thing is that when the harness and the long line is on, it is about your dog. It's not about you and your training goals. It's about your dog and him getting the freedom that he needs. Then when you, and that's what we want to make sure that we're keeping clear in our heads. That when I put that harness on Leo, it's his time, not my time. Now I'm still going to, like I said, I'm still going to take advantage of things. If he looks up at me, of course I'm going to reinforce him for that. I'd be silly not to. But this is about him and his freedom and his socialization and his decompression time. Not about me and how badly I want to teach him a sit stay, right? So I don't think there's anything wrong with doing both Doing what you're saying, you know, is switching from a freedom walk to a training session. Just make sure you're keeping it clear in your head. Um, cool. All right. Well, that is all for today then. If you guys have questions about freedom walks, let us know inside the group. Train your service dog with confidence. And like I said, once you try this with your own dog, I'd love to know how it goes, what questions you have. And I'd love to see a picture or a video inside our Facebook group as well. All right. Have a good day, guys.